Thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. The Army remains in full support of Secretary Carter's directive to open every job to every soldier, regardless of gender. Following three years of study, then Secretary John McHugh recommended that no exceptions be made in implementation, and I concur with his recommendation today. This is the right decision for our Army. Our Army represents America and embodies the best of our values. The personal courage and selfless service made by women in our Army is no different than that exhibited by our men. We owe them the respect and honor to offer them the opportunity to succeed anywhere in our Army based upon only the merits of their performance. Practically, this is the right decision for our Army as well. As our Army gets smaller, our success increasingly depends upon our ability to maximize the contributions of every volunteer that fills our ranks. A soldier's ability to meet established standards that contribute to our success will remain our overriding factor moving forward. Recognizing these imperatives, the Army began integration efforts several years ago to take full advantage of America's diverse and deep talent. Practical knowledge gained from these efforts complemented by several years of extensive research, collaboration, and practical evaluation have led us to three primary conclusions. First, that women are capable of performing every job in the Army. This is not to say that every woman could do every job, just like every man cannot do every job. But no job in our Army has standards that cannot be met by women. Therefore, every soldier will have the opportunity should they choose to do so, to compete against established standards for every position to include the infantry, armor, and special forces. Next, we will maintain high individual standards, performance, and professional conduct. These standards will continue to be based upon the requirements of the position and nothing else. We will continue to enforce them fairly and objectively across the force. Our guiding principle for these standards is and will remain exclusively their contribution to mission success. Finally, leadership is critical to integration. As Secretary Carter noted, the performance of teams is important and integration will change these dynamics. Our leaders, enabled by comprehensive and deliberate education, will closely monitor these efforts. We cannot anticipate or control for every impact of integration but this will not slow our progress. We will continue to monitor and report the lessons we learn so that our Army can collectively integrate the force and share our experiences. But we are prepared to act and benefit from integration now. Full integration will likely take several years, both to adjust the culture and to grow individual skill skills within our force. But I am confident that every leader in the Army will understand and respect the increased readiness that integration will bring. Underpinned by strong professional leaders, we will remain true to the values of the Army and to America and emerge as a stronger, more ready Army as a result. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General Milley, welcome. Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate it. And uh, Ranking Member Reed, and thank you all for the opportunity to appear before you on behalf of the America's Army and, uh, and to discuss uh, the Army's implementation plan for full integration of women. Uh, for the record, uh, I fully support uh, opening any uh, military occupational specialty and all military occupational specialties in the United States Army to all soldiers, regardless of gender. It is my solemn duty as the Army Chief of Staff to ensure that the Army remains ready to defend this great nation, and to do so, we need the most capable and qualified men and women. Readiness is the Army's number one priority, and I believe that full integration of women in all career fields will either maintain, sustain, or improve the overall readiness of the United States Army and our capability of the force if and only if we maintain and enforce rigorous combat readiness standards, we remain a merit-based, results-oriented organization, and we apply no quotas and no pressure. We cannot compromise combat readiness and effectiveness for any reason whatsoever. 
The Army's implementation plan will be guided by a set of first principles. We'll maintain readiness by adherence very strictly to a set of standards, and we will not impose quotas on ourselves. We will execute a very deliberate, methodical, and transparent process. We must not rush to failure, and in this particular project, I believe that slow is smooth and smooth will be fast at the end of the day. We will set conditions by positioning female leaders in units who are engaged, and those units' leaders will be accountable. These principles are aligned with the guidance given to us by the Secretary of Defense. The Army has identified several key tasks required for full gender integration. When the SecDef approved our, when he approves our plan, we have developed and will implement published, measurable, gender-neutral standards based on combat readiness requirements. Next, we'll initiate gender-neutral training for all officers, non-commissioned officers, and junior enlisted. And to ensure the success, our plan calls for the deliberate and methodical approach that begins with assessment, selection, training, and assigning of female infantry and armor leaders, both officers and NCOs, to units. That's our leader's first principle. And then we will assign junior enlisted, junior female enlisted to those units. I estimate that effective female integration into infantry, armor, and special forces will require no less than one to three years of deliberate effort in order to develop the individual skills and grow our leaders. The Army is currently in the process of ensuring our facilities comply with law and DOD policies for accession and gender-neutral living standards at both our basic and individual uh, training. Additionally, we will provide leaders and soldiers with integration education and training to enhance our integration efforts over the course of this year. This spring, female cadets and officer candidates who meet the gender-neutral standard will be given the opportunity to request either infantry or armor branches, and that process is currently ongoing. The Army's integration plan is based on a successful record of opening occupations previously closed to women. Since 2011, the Army has opened nine MOSs and approximately 95,000 positions in combat arms units. In fact, today, every single active duty infantry, armor, and field artillery battalion has women in them. Additionally, 100, uh, Task Force 160th, the 160th Special Operation mm -hmm. Aviation Regiment, was open to women in 2014. And of course, as you know, the Army's Ranger School, school was open last year. These experiences have informed and will enable the Army to successfully implement gender integration to increase our combat readiness. Make no mistake about it, this process is going to have challenges. But if we proceed with a methodical and deliberate execution, and like all previous integration efforts, it's my belief that the Army will be successful. I have personally witnessed in multiple tours a very intense ground combat. I have personally witnessed women perform, and their tasks were not much different than any other man that was on that battlefield. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind, in my professional judgment, that women, some women, can perform every single job in the United States Army, to include infantry, armor, and special forces. Army leaders will continue to assess and we will adjust the process to ensure that our standards and combat readiness are maintained, and you, the committee, have my word on this. You also have my commitment that we will move forward in this endeavor in a very transparent and collaborative manner with this committee, with the American people, and with the Department of Defense. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify today, and I look forward to your questions.